Hey guys, Mike here. It's another beautiful morning we're pouring on. It's bright and chilly this morning. It's uh, you know mid-November. There it is, 27 degrees out when we're starting. There's actually some frost on top of the styrofoam, so it's really cold. Uh, we got really warm concrete, so uh, the the mix design we're using today is my cold weather mix design. If you guys want to know what, what the exact specs are on it, let me know down in the comments. Just put down uh, cold weather mix design down there. And if I get enough of you guys comment, then I'll, I'll pin it at the top of the comments so you all know what we use in the cold, cold weather. Now this floor here we got poured, it's actually two floors we're pouring today, so you're going to get to see the garage floor. Then over to the right, you can't see it right now, there's another upper floor we're doing. And both these floors got done power trial and sawed about 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's how good this mix design sets up in cold weather. You can see the steam coming off it. The actual concrete temps are about 80 degrees. So Ryan, what? initially, you know, coming right you out should. of the truck, yeah. it's pretty warm. And then the PSI we use, the admixtures we use, all that stuff adds to the, to the speeding of the set time, which helps things a lot as the temperature gets really cold. But you're gonna get to see us pour the garage floor here. It's a three bay garage and then We'll get to pour that, that four inch thick upper floor there that's also got radiant heat tubing in it. We typically hand screed like this all our garage floors because they have quite a slope to them from the back towards the front. Do you, when you guys pour garage floors or if you're looking to have a garage floor poured, do you think you want it to slope like this right out the front? Or do you like a floor drain, a center drain, a trench drain, some type of drain in your garage? What do you guys prefer? This is what we prefer doing right here. This is a little bit easier just pouring with a slope as far as the pouring and the finishing goes versus doing a drain. But we do a lot of each. I would say most of the ones that we do are like this. Probably 75% have a slope to them. And we don't typically use the vibrating screed when we pour slopes like this. We got a, we got a water reducer in there so we can pour a pretty loose mix. Still holds the shape good, but it doesn't weaken it at all. We don't really need to add water to add uh, flowability with the, with the type of admixture we use. The garage is going in pretty good. We got two trucks this morning. There's actually a, a house foundation here too, a basement floor that we're not doing today. We, we would have normally, we would have done all three of them if we could get enough trucks, but there's just, right now there's just not enough concrete drivers to go around for everybody doing uh, concrete first thing in the morning. And we always pour first thing, first light in the morning we want concrete. So we don't typically like pouring in the middle of the day. You just never know. There's too much that can go wrong. Either trucks don't show up on time or someone runs out on another job and your second truck is late. And we, just, we like getting our trucks back to back if we're pouring two trucks or if we're pouring three, you know, we just like to have them back to back to back because we, we can empty one out in 10 or 15 minutes and then we're right on to the next one. So we typically like to pour that way. This one's going pretty good so far. You know, when we when we use this this cold weather mix, it, it typically sets pretty good. It starts setting usually. You can feel it as you're walking in it like we are right now. Get it on the ground and you've got just a few minutes really to get the, the concrete screeded before it starts setting up and it gets hard to screed. So it uh, it's, doesn't show right here in the video like that, but you can start to feel it on your feet as you kick in and pushing with the come along it just it doesn't seem to flow quite as good once it's sitting down there for a few minutes so we typically like to get it right dumped out get it screeded and then you know the bull floating is usually not too bad we'll pour you know as far as cold weather we'll pour all all winter long here in Maine as long as the temps allow it you know, we'll, if, the, if the high for the day is calling for like 28 degrees as the high and let's say it's 10 degrees out when we start at 630, we'll get the concrete to set up with this mix design. It'll dry, even though it, the temperatures never get above freezing. 
you know, the key is protecting the sub base with some type of blankets, making sure that's not frozen when you show up. And then when we get done pouring and finishing, you know, you got to cover the concrete with blankets. You got to keep the concrete from freezing too. But we can pour all winter long. You know, obviously if it snows or if it's freezing rain or something like that, we, we don't pour. And it's not that I like pouring when it's that cold. I mean, you'd think by now, living in Maine, all these years I've lived in Maine my whole life, over 50 years, I'd get used to the cold weather, but it's actually kind of just the opposite. It, uh, each, it seems like each winter my body gets less and less used to it, and the more I want to go south in the winter. <laughs> so uh, if you guys can relate to that, let me know. All right, so here's this upper floor. Good thing about this was we were just matching top of wall. Um, had quite a few pipes in it for whatever. Must be like kitchen, bathroom type thing. So it wasn't it wasn't like it was a, a piece of cake to pour, but we had to go around all those pipes and stuff. But it really wasn't too bad because when you're just matching top of wall, it's never really that hard to pour. Really, I don't think anyway. You can screed right off the top of the concrete, so. You can see all those radiant tubes in there. This whole this whole floor is going to be heated along with the garage. The basement wasn't. It was just, we're going to pour actually the basement floor tomorrow. We'll get two trucks for that tomorrow. But there's no radiant tubing in that one. There's just styrofoam in there. People put styrofoam under the slab like this, you know, just to help keep hold the heat in the slab and deflect the heat upwards so the heat doesn't go in the sub base. And that's pretty, pretty standard for most of the radiant floors we do anyway I don't know if I've ever poured a radiant floor without styrofoam under it I don't think I have we do a lot of them here too almost I don't know if quite half the floors we do for houses are radiant but almost half of them are So we're moving right along here as you can see <laughs> going about as fast as we can around all those pipes those pipes slow you really slow you down you'll see you here when we get to screeding them so we're going to screed around each individual one we'll we'll shoot a bunch of wet pads and just going off the top of the wall and then around the pipe that side over there wasn't too bad we could just screed like normal got it a little bit high there but Better high than low is what we say. Darren and Luca doing the brunt of the screeding today. I jumped on it right there for a little bit, but they do most of it usually. All right, so we just set the truck over. That truck had nine and a half on it. We had ten and a half of the garage. There's the guy building us a little road for tomorrow to get into the house. There was a lot of clay around this thing, so it was pretty wet, pretty soft. That's why we couldn't do the house slab today, because they didn't have that little road built. We had planned on doing it today. But luckily they had these two ready for us here. All the leaves have fallen too. It's, it's about mid-November here, and I'd say half the leaves have fallen which is a good thing because on a windy day this thing would have been covered with leaves we've been fighting the leaves all, all you know morning long trying to power trial this thing this is a pretty typical day for us I'd say you know we'll go pour a house a garage or a big garage or most most of the time we're pouring floors we'll do patios and walkways and pool decks and stuff a lot and when the temperatures are a little bit warmer we don't tend to do too many of those in cold temperatures like this mostly floors and we have a ton of them to do I still got oh right now I it's the, it's mid-november and I, I don't know I got more than we can handle before cold weather really sets in I can tell you that and they're all outside like this too just waiting for us so we're definitely hoping we don't get any bad weather so we can just, you know, knock these off one a day. So that's as easy as the pouring part was. 
you know, then we'll get it bow floated. And then what I do is I'll leave Darren and Luke here to power trial these. And then I'm going to get stuff ready for the following, you know, the upcoming days, make, making sure everybody's going to have their plumbing done, the grade done, the styrofoam done, the radiant heat done. I mean, there's always subs before us that need to get their stuff done. And sometimes that doesn't always work out when people tell me they're ready. So I'm usually running around, you know, with hour, hour and a half trip sometimes just making sure everything's ready for the next day and the day after that and then the next week just so we can have our plan put together and not have to deviate from the plan if the weather's good so that's the way we like doing it let me know how you guys like doing it down in the comments do you do it similar to that uh, do you have guys you can leave just to finish if you take off and uh, again I really appreciate appreciate you guys watching come on back we'll see you on the next one